Hello beautiful people. Today I am going to finally film the Q&A that I have been waiting for. So I'm so excited for this. I asked you guys on Instagram, Twitter, and on my channel about questions that you have for me about anything and I am very excited to get to them. I had kind of a few questions that were asked over and over again. The first one that I got a lot was all about fitness and how I got into fitness and like what does that look like for me and I'm actually doing a whole separate video that I'm about to film right after this one that's all about my weight loss story and journey and like how I got into fitness and stuff but basically my fitness and everything has been one of those things that like I've gotten into a few different times. I was a dancer in high school so I was dancing all the time in high school and then I stopped dancing, stopped working out. I got back into it in 2018 and that is the big point of what the next video will be all about so keep an eye out for that. Hit subscribe if you want to. The other big question that I was asked over and over again is all about babies. When am I having babies? What's my plan? How am I planning, when am I planning on having a baby and what are the plans for like preconception stuff, all of that. So um, basically we are still not on the trying stage yet, but we are talking about like when we might have babies, assuming that everything works and everything, but um, Probably at least not for another year. I still have one more semester of school left and I would really like to be in my career before I have a baby and we want to be like financially in the right place before having a baby. With all of that said though, I am switching birth controls because the depo shot does have a possible side effect of not having you ovulate for up to 12 months after you stop it. So I'm stopping the depo shot now and going on a different birth control so that when we are eventually ready, we won't have to worry about that possibility of stalling it when we're ready. I definitely don't want to be pregnant in June of this year because we're going to Costa Rica at an all-inclusive resort and I'd like to partake in the drinking. So I don't want to be pregnant in June. I got some questions about plans and goals for 2020, which I did just post a New Year's resolutions video on this channel, so I'll link that up above. But Basically, the big goals and plans for 2020 is I did just get a new job. I got a promotion, so settling into that and really getting started there. It's still with the same company I work for, working in teen residential treatment for mental health, but it's a different um, position, and it's I'm really excited to get started. That's one thing. I want to finish my program, and I am going to be emailing a person to do an evaluation for interpreting to see like if I pass which would be cool because then potentially I could start interpreting but if I fail I want feedback for what needs to get done before I can really start working as an interpreter so those are some plans for 2020. I'm going to Costa Rica in 2020. We're going in June like I just said. Those are the big ones. I can't believe I'm going to be done with my program in June too. That's insane. I'd either like to be hired as an interpreter by the end of the year or I would like to have had yet another promotion at my pos at my job within the end of the year. So those are some big goals for 2022. It's also asked in relationship to jobs, how many jobs do you have right now? I technically only have one job. I work, like I said, in a residential treatment center and I am getting a promotion so I'll be working in a different capacity but still with the same company um, so that is like my job but then I also have an online job that uh, is closed captioning um, and I can do that job like whenever I want to it's like they have a market where jobs get posted and you can pick up or put away whatever you want so I do that like when I want some extra cash but it's not a a job that I'm scheduled or anything so like I haven't done it in a couple months but I probably will be doing it this month. My sister asked me <laughs> will you name your future child after me? No, sorry. That would be too confusing. There would be two Laurens. No. Some book related ones. Brittany asked me Throne of Glass or Harry Potter? That is so hard. Throne of Glass or Harry Potter? I'm gonna have to go 
with Harry Potter because Throne of Glass, although phenomenal, doesn't start out phenomenal. You gotta, you gotta give it a minute. You have to read the first book and be like, yeah, this is fine, and then read the second one and then you're finally like in it. Um, so you have to really give it a chance. And Harry Potter, the first one, is just as good. I mean, it's for younger audiences than the seventh one, but all of them are great. So going with Harry Potter. Also, I'm nostalgic, so it's kind of not a fair question. Oh my god. Chelsea asked me, what's your favorite book you've read that I've given you? Um, all I have in my head is King of Bourbon Street right now. What other books have you given me? You've given me so many books. I like can't even tell you which books that you've given me. All I have in my head is King of Bourbon Street. King of Bourbon Street is a smutty romance. I had thoughts. <laughs> so I can't think of anything else, Chelsea. And when are we hanging out again? Chelsea, text me and we'll figure it out. I'm excited, I wanna go. Kirstie Bookish World asked me, what's my favorite thing about being married? Being married is not that different from our relationship before we were married because we were together for five and a half years and out of those five and a half years, we lived together for like five years and four months. It wasn't very different. The wedding day was really cool and I wish that it was like normal to have more than one because not that I want to have those all the time, they were expensive, but like, I want to redo it. I want to do it again. I want to experience it all over again. Um, I also really like my rings. Um, they're nice to have. But yeah, being being married, like our relationship doesn't feel really any different. Um, I'm still like not used to being called a wife. <laughs> Matt has me in his phone as wife and I'm like, Am I a wife? <laughs> I don't know. And then same thing with the word husband. Like, it sounds so old. I don't know. I do obviously like being married. It just doesn't feel any different really than what our relationship was before. The biggest like difference, but I don't know if I love it specifically, but like the funniest or most interesting thing that happens is I say my husband or that I'm married or whatever and um, especially the teenagers that I work with at work go, you're married? You're too young to be married? And I'm like, I'm older than you think I am. I'm a normal age to be married. What the heck? So that's fun, but I don't know. I, I think the experience of like having a bachelorette party and hanging out with my girls and you know, like partying and like making all of the penis jokes and all of that was really fun and obviously the wedding day was really fun. Like all of that was really like such great memories and we didn't do a honeymoon but I'm sure that would also be a big one. We did like a pre-wedding honeymoon for New Orleans. Um, so like there are a lot of memories attached for sure and just like Getting to be so raw and real and emotional in front of all of your friends and family was really a crazy experience that I absolutely love and cherish. So I don't have an exact answer to your question, but that, I guess, is the answer to your question. On the question of marriage and crap, somebody asked me, Crystal asked me, how did I meet my husband? Uh, we met working at Applebee's together up in the hometown that he's from. I had moved there. Um, so I, I moved up there, I got a job at Applebee's, and he was a server and I was a host, and that's how we met. And he used to be the guy who threw parties every Monday, and so he invited me to one, and then we also went out on a movie date, and we've been watching movies ever since, because <laughs> we really like movies and television. We both are not servers anymore, which is great. If you like this book, you'll like this booktuber. If you like Summer of Salt, you'll like Chelsea from Chelsea Dolling Reads. If you like Nevernight, you'll like Piera Ford. If you like Strange the Dreamer, you'll like Katrina from Little Book Owl. If you like thrillers, period. You'll like books and la la. If you like smut, you'll like Chandler from Chandler Ainsley. If you like um, A Darker Shade of Magic, you'll like books with Chloe and Spencer from Common Spence. 
If you like graphic novels, specifically fantasy graphic novels, you'll like Allie from Hardback Quarter. If you like Cassandra Clare, you'll like Emma from Emma Books and Momo from The Booktube Girl. If you like a lot of fantasy, uh, like almost all of it, <laughs> then you'll like Julie from Pages and Pens. And if you like Stephen King and also really weird shit, you'll like from you'll like Natasha from My Reading Is Odd. If you like a more literary approach to reading, you'll like Alexa from Library of Alexa, as well as uh, what's her name? Possibly Lit. I think her name is Emily. If you like reading about Muslims and Muslim rep and getting to know how Muslim representation is important, then you will like Sajid from Books Are My Social Life. If you like anything angsty and you want to hear all of the shit talking, you'll like Cindy from Read With Cindy. I think that's gonna be it for right now. I can't think of anyone else. Somebody also asked me what do I edit my videos with and I edit my videos on Final Cut Pro. I use a Canon T3i along with a shotgun microphones. Um, and I also have umbrella lights, and then I edit on Final Cut Pro. I edit my thumbnails on Adobe Illustrator, but I don't know anything about Adobe Illustrator. Matt happens to be a graphic designer, and I use his expertise for free. That's my favorite thing about being a wife. Somebody asked me what my reading goals for 2020 were. My main reading goal for 2020 is just reading 52 books in a year. Um, that's what I set my good, Goodreads goal at this year and I have found that the last two years I set at 52 I actually read 90 and 91 books so I'm doing pretty good but I don't want to expect myself to read that many books just because I feel like that's too much pressure for me so one book a week seems very reasonable and if I make more than that that'll be great. Um, as far as other reading goals, I just, I want to read more nonfiction, like self-help stuff. I've been really enjoying that content lately. Um, I also have a plan to read all of the Goodread winners for 2019 this year, so I am slowly making my way through that list. And I have a bunch of, like, channel goals, but uh, reading goals, those are the big ones. And then she also asked me, this is Never Bloom Again, and she asked me if I had any readathons planned coming up soon, but no, I do not at the moment. Um, readathons I kind of just decide to pop myself into when I feel like it. I definitely like the magical readathon. I'll for sure do that when G from Book Roast does that again, and Contemporaryathon, and probably Reading Rush, actually but like other ones I tend to just be like, oh, it's happening? Okay, maybe I'll do it this week. Travel plans, the only big travel we have it planned is going to Costa Rica in June, but I also know that we're going to go up and visit like where Matt's from and where my grandma lives at least a couple times this year. We usually try to go once every other month-ish, and we will probably make our way down to San Diego to visit our friends down there. They are expecting a baby in March, so we will probably go down there after the baby's born. I was also asked, how do I feel now that I'm almost completely finished with school? And I feel scared, because I don't feel ready to be an interpreter. I don't feel ready to be an interpreter. <laughs> Lastly, just for my sister, what are my in-depth thoughts on crocs? And a croc is an alligator for your feet. It just chomps in and attaches itself, and once you go there, you're never getting your foot back because Crocs are addictive. That's why I say no to Crocs. With that said, it's time to go. <laughs> this was my q and I'm very excited. I would love to be doing Q&As regularly, so if you have any other questions for me, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below, and I'll be sure to collect those and do another Q&A when I have a good amount of questions. So I'd love to hear your questions and answer those for you. In the meantime, I would love if you hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed to me already, and like this video if you enjoyed. I make videos on this channel. It's new! I now make videos on this channel Tuesdays and Thursdays. So for this week, you are getting videos a lot because I am doing 
videos for my old schedule and then straight into my new schedule. So I have lots of videos coming up. My new schedule will be Tuesdays and Thursdays on this channel and Mondays and Wednesdays on my booktube channel. So make sure to check out my social media links down in the description. You can follow me everywhere on there and I will see you guys very soon with a new video. Bye!